Alan Shepard was uh, probably class one astronaut. He was bright. Family was important to him. He was really a wonderful human being. He was a proud man, sometimes arrogant, but uh, test pilots are always that way. You want them to be that way. It's the first step we had to make, and he did it well. When you talk about the right stuff, he was the epitome of the right stuff. I remember my father saying when the original seven astronauts were first chosen was that they were very competent, very competitive, and it was going to be a good fight to win the prize, as they called it. It was friendly competition, uh, but it was intense competition. I certainly wouldn't deny that. Well, he was very confident in what he could do, and he pushed himself. He, he really did go beyond what he could possibly do. I mean, he just did that extra 101 percent. Shepard was a standout uh, from the very beginning for me. He was a very bright guy, probably the brightest of the bunch. Glenn, of course, I had known before. Shira, I had known before because of our, of our Navy connections. So I knew there was a lot of talent there, and uh, I knew that uh, it was going to be a tough fight to, to win the prize. All seven astronauts were in one room. Uh, Bob Gilruth came in and said, okay, Al Shepard, you have the first one. Gus Grissom, you have the second. John Glenn, you are the backup for both. And Dr. Gilruth walked out of the room and said, good luck. And so Daddy's in the room by himself with all seven original, well, including himself, six, set of eyes looking at him. And he thought of how elated he was. But yet almost immediately afterwards, feeling sorry for my buddies. Because there they were. I mean, they were trying just as hard as I was. We all shook each other's hands. We all shook Al's hands. Pretty soon I was the only guy left in the room. We jokingly later on uh, confided in each other that the choice, the choice of Al Shepard was just plain dumb, because it should have been me, everybody said. The competition ended once that decision was made, and everybody wanted to make every flight an absolute success. He was obviously ready to fly, and uh, we were ready to help him. And uh, it was a hell of a day. Daddy, what if they put you up in that rocket and they can't get you back down? And he said, Julie, they're not going to put me up in that rocket if they can't get me back down. On May 5, uh, the atmosphere at the Cape was upbeat, a little subdued, especially for Al because Yuri Gagarin had, had flown before him. That was sort of the cloud that was over our first launch. Uh, but nevertheless, the day came. Our entire front yard in Virginia Beach is covered with reporters. Alice came in and woke me up and she says, Julie, mother must have done something. There are all these policemen out in our front yard. They didn't tell us our father was going up first because we would blab it. Everything went just the way we had planned it. His, uh, the testing of the suit, putting that on first. There was a classic picture of him when he reached the launch pad. He was accompanied by Dr. Bill Douglas, who was the astronaut's physician. And there was Al in a silver space suit with the, uh, with the air conditioner in his hand. I remember saying to myself, well, I'm not going to see this redstone again. And you know, pilots love to go out and kick the tires. And it was sort of like, reaching out and kicking the tires on the redstone. Because I stopped and looked at it, you know, to look back and, and up uh, at this beautiful rocket and uh, thought, well, okay, Buster, let's go and get the job done. What a sight and what a thrill. Uh, it was, that was ex probably one of the most exciting moments of my lifetime, if not the most exciting. Almost every flight has delays. You expect them. 
There was a time during the countdown when uh, there was a problem with the inverter in the Redstone. And then the weather came. Turns out Al Shepard had been in that spacecraft for more than four hours. Waited and waited. Well, um, if that's the case, then I would like to get out and relieve myself. That was funny. You want to get out and urinate. But Brown says the astronaut will stay in the nose cone. You just go ahead and do it. <laughs> and of course, with a cotton undergarment and with 100% oxygen flowing through that spacecraft, uh, it was, I was totally dry by the time we launched. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off. Lift off. Launch is okay. Roger. His performance is perfect. Velocity is okay. Pitch 180 degrees. Altitude 365,000. Roger. 2G. Kevin Holding. Freedom 7 is still go. The trajectory is a okay. You couldn't have told the difference between the flight and the simulation. Freedom 7 with astronaut Alan B. Shepard reports the fuel system is go. 4G. Cabin 5.5 pounds per square inch, oxygen go, all systems go. Capsule separate, great command. Pilot on manual, yawing right. His control motions that he did in flight compared to what he did in the simulator, right on top of each other. Astronaut Alan B. Shepard is still talking to us, working like a test pilot, reporting facts and figures, reporting procedures in the precise engineering manner of a test pilot. So hold it, baby, hold it there. Yeah, it's a little bit of there. Roddy, boy, Roddy. All the voice reports were right on at the same time you'd expected them. Okay, retro fire completed. The Mercury spacecraft is beginning to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Report on G's occasionally. Right, he's just starting now, 50 seconds, one and a half. Going through big G now, he is still talking, saying, okay. Six. Roger. Nine. Roger. Thirteen. Drove shit. Okay. Pilot, okay. Very good. The uh, Shepard recovery operation was probably one of the smoothest and one of the quickest we've ever had. It just hit the water a moment ago. A cheer went up from the ship company watching here from all decks on the aircraft carrier. It was a perfect day. Perfect day for him, perfect day for us. It's the first time we ever put anybody into space. And Al was a good person to represent us on that. He was outstanding and he, he deserved it. We're always proud of him and his abilities and what he did do. I never heard my father say, this is hard. It was a challenge. At least you tried. Who wouldn't want to follow that type of fellow American into whatever you are going to accomplish? Miles and miles and miles. Alan Shepard was a close friend of mine. Uh, we had a lot of love for each other. Uh, and I was damn proud to be uh, in that position with him. Uh, so were my guys, so all of all the people in NASA. <laughs>